Well, first of all, I just want to say that normally I do it outside when there's lots of clouds in the sky because they, they look really cool in HDR. Because I wanted to show you my technique of how to get a cool HDR picture. But right now it's not really what I would want it to look like outside to get an HDR picture. So I'm just going to show you how to do HDR in general. And then later we'll show you my technique. But I'll just go over like standard fundamentals of HDR. Sound like I'm in basketball. Show you the fundamentals. So, I want to show you how to properly expose the window so you can see outside and at the same time expose this area right here so you can see inside and then have just an overall properly exposed image and that's what HDR does just to prove to you what HDR is doing because normally this picture the, the window would be blown out or overexposed and this area might look good. But I want to show you how you can make it all look good. Okay, so the reason I'm using lighting is because there's not many really lights in here. But I want to get the ISO as low as possible. Because when you have ISO high, it presents grain in the picture. And I noticed that HDRs bring out grain. If you have an HDR with a lot of grain, it's going to just be even more grainy when, once you turn into an HDR. Um, first of all, I'm using a... Stop interrupting his speech. I'm using a 20 millimeter uh, or 15 millimeter 2.8. Lexi, leave me alone. <laughs> I'm using a 15 millimeter 2.8, which is actually a fisheye lens, and it's not really fisheye. It doesn't look like a fisheye in a 7D camera. It actually looks like a fisheye when it's in a full sensor camera like the 5D Mark II, but in a 7D, it's more like a wide angle lens with a little bit of distortion but I think it looks really cool in HDR pictures. So, you want to get the ISO as low as possible. Since I'm not outside, I can't get it that low. And right now I have it at 800, which is about as high as you can go if you want it to look even decent. So there's going to be some grain in this. But you want to get it as low as possible, which is why I have lights lighting this area. Otherwise, I would have to turn the ISO up to get a better exposure. But since I have these lights, I could probably do okay with 800. That might work. But if we're outside, you probably want it around like 100, 200, something like that. Something really low because then you won't have any grain. Another thing is you want to have the aperture fairly... I don't know what the right, number, right word is, but you want it to have a high number on the aperture, which closes the aperture so there's less depth of field. Um, and you got to kind of get a good balance of all this. This is probably a good balance right here. So I got it at, at 10 right now. There's not many de much depth of field. But yeah, in HDRs, depth of field looks really, really bad. So you want to make sure to get as much blur out of the picture as you can. By the way, it's to be in camera mode. <laughs> and you also want it to be manual. And now that I'm in camera mode, I can actually bring the exposure up. So it's about where I want it to be exposed for the normal picture. So a couple other things you have to make sure you do. You want to make sure that you're taking RAW because it's not HDR unless you're doing RAW. What RAW does is it doesn't finalize the picture inside the camera as a JPEG and it leaves all the information open for whatever you want to do with it. So there's more dynamic range in a RAW image than there is in a JPEG. And right now I have it set to take a RAW picture and a small JPEG, which makes it easier for me because I can see the thumbnail with the small JPEG and then I'm like, okay, that's what I want. And then I use the RAW because for some reason in computers, unless you have some special program, you can't see thumbnails of the RAWs, you only see of the JPEGs. So it, it takes a small picture and a RAW. So make sure you have it set on RAW. And another thing you have to do is to go to Exposure Comp slash AEB. And this is on the 7D. I don't know what it would look like in your camera, but this is exposure bracketing. And what you do is you go here and then you, up here, you turn this and this is what happens. Nothing. Oh, you turn it the other way. And what do you do? This way. And as you can see, these are moving. And what that means is it's going to take one normal exposed picture, which is the one in the middle, and it's going to take one underexposed and one overexposed. I know in Nikon cameras, I think you could do more than three, but in Canon, you can only do three, which is all you need when you're using RAW. But with Nikon, you could probably get away with using JPEG if you do multiple, but who cares? I don't like Nikon. Anyways, so what you got to do is choose how dark you want the underexposed one to be and how bright you want the overexposed one to be. So I'm not going to set this quite yet. I'm going to go back to here. And right now, there's the normal exposed picture. So that's where I want that to be. Let me focus this better. All right, so what you want to do, now that I know that's the normal exposed picture, 
I'll figure out where I want the overexposed picture to be. Now actually this doesn't really matter too much because there's nothing I want to expose with that. So I'll just let that be wherever it goes. But for this, I want to make sure that I have a low enough exposure to expose that so it looks good. To see that, out the window. To see outside the window. So I'm going to go down. I don't know how. I, I guess I'm not going to be able to see out there. Well, that's not good. So actually, what I want to do in this case is turn the lights down a little bit. So I'm going to turn the lights down. So that way the normal exposure is actually a little bit lower. No, I want to turn them up. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like, what? Turn everything backwards. Turning up the lights. So now there's more light in the overall picture. And it didn't well, change Well, I'm standing much. in front of the light. Okay, so now I brought down two notches, which isn't much at all. But it might give us a better exposure outside. Wow, see, it's, it's really bright outside. Um, I'm just going to do it and see what happens. Go to here, and it's going to go all the way. And I usually don't do that because it usually looks crappy in HDR, but I guess to show you, to prove to you that this works, it might actually come out good. I'm not sure. I hope it does. So I'm going to go back to menu. Another thing you have to do is go out of live mode and then hit Q. I don't know why it doesn't show you this when you're in live mode, but it just doesn't work that way. So you get out of live mode and hit Q, and then you want to go down to this where it says single shooting and click and then make sure it's set to uh, I guess high speed continuous. That way it does three pictures in a row. Otherwise if you have it set to single shooting it's not going to do that. So you want it high speed continuous. I guess you could do low speed continuous but go back to live mode since you guys, so you guys can see it. Alright now I'm just get a better shot here. Take the picture and hold it down until it takes three shots. So now when you go to play, you can see that it took a picture of Sabrina as Zachary Cotago. No. It took an overexposed one, an underexposed one, and a normal exposed one. Okay, so I moved the files onto the computer, and as you can see, this is the raw image, the CR2, and then you can't see, see the thumbnail, and then this is the JPEG. So I don't want to use the JPEGs, I just have those as reference. And I found that the first three actually look the best to me. Some people use Photoshop for this, which you can. You can go to, I forget what it is, it's like Process or something, or Batch, or I don't know, or <coughs> Automate. Just, just know. Google it. Yeah, there's a way to do HDRs with Photoshop. And it works, but it doesn't really get the surreal uh, artistic effect out of HDR that you can. It's actually more just like a traditional HDR. But what I want to do is get like a sort of artistic effect out of it. And I noticed that Photomatix Pro does a lot better job than um, Photoshop does. And it's fairly cheap, I think. Let me check for updates, because I haven't used this in a while. All right, so I just updated to the newest version, which was actually way behind. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to control click each of these, so I'm ha I have all highlighted. And it's going to drag it over to Photomatix Pro. And it says, what do you like to do? Merge for HD processing, open files only. I want to merge for HDR processing and hit OK. And these are my pictures. Um, and hit OK. And then for this, I usually keep it the same pretty much. Um, it, but matching features it works the best for me almost every time. Photomax Pro is good for removing ghosting, which you get a lot in these pictures. Ghosting is where it's if, like... If something moves during the picture, there's going to be ghosting. It's like a blur. Kinda. Yeah, so like if one picture is slightly different than the other one, as something moved, then it's just going to look like a ghost. So I guess there's a selective ghosting, de-ghosting tool I, that I didn't know about, but I'm going to do automatic because I don't think anything really moved at all. You can reduce noise, but I think that takes away from the HDR, so I'm just going to take, let it, leave it as it is. Auto white balance, I'm just going to let it go. So I didn't change anything. And it takes a little bit of while, but it creates the HDR for you. And I actually have... I think I have a preset saved on here that sort of gets the look sort of where I want it to be already but it might look different because I've never done an inside picture before so this might look a lot different when it pops up. Alright so this is my preset that I use for moch out most outside pictures. Moch. For most outside pictures I use this preset. You can see it already looks sort of epic okay. if you can see in the camera. If you get close enough you can see that there is a lot of grain in this image and it's only in 800 ISO so 
definitely make sure the ISO is as low as possible. But as you can see, it just looks sort of epic. Especially this wood that looks crazy. Yeah. Wood looks cool in HDRs. Shiny things look cool in HDRs. There's not really anything shiny over here. I guess this is shiny. So that looks pretty cool. But I just think it makes stuff look cool. It's sort of like an artistic way to do stuff. But since I've never done the inside one before, I wasn't really sure what it was going to look like in the end. And it sort of brought out outside a little bit, but not really. Because it was way too bright out there to make the properly exposed image of this be close enough to that so it'll bring it out. So if it was darker out there, it would work, but it just didn't turn out as I expected. Um, and then there's a lot of settings over here that you can play with. I'll just wait until we get a good outside shot and we'll do that. But I just wanted to show you sort of what it would look like in the end, I guess. Okay, so I just played around with it a little bit, and I realized that my preset that I use for my HDRs, it doesn't exactly bring out the lower exposed image. Like, as you can see, this is the properly exposed shot out of the three images. Okay, you cannot see anything out there. You literally, like, there's supposed to be a car there. You can sort of see it, but not really. It's just completely blown out. So without HDR, you wouldn't be able to see anything there. So I used a different setting in the HDR program. And now, as you can see, it still looks like crap because the ISO was a little bit too high. But, let's just zoom in here. Everything is exposed properly. Well, at least closer. This looks exposed right, you can see the tree, and you can see that car. So everything is there. And I'll just do a side by side. So as you can see, and it, it brings out some of the lightness in, in the wood. It brings out outside, and that's pretty much this. What, what I wanted to show you is that it brings outside out, I guess. This is just a preset in their program. Like, I'm not here to make HDRs, I'm here to make something that's artistic, which would be this. Or, but tr trust me, just trust me on this. When it's a good day outside, and there's lots of clouds out there, and we get something shiny to take a picture of, you'll see how epic it, it can look. So I used DJ's tutorial advice and went out and did my own HDR.